Welcome to another In Wheel Time podcast, a 30-minute mini version of the In Wheel Time car show that airs live every Saturday morning, 8 to 11 a.m. Central. .org. Your favorite go-to spot in par, car podcast, par, car, par, 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 what? Huh? Car podcasting and live streaming. You're on the In Wheel Time car talk show. Just ahead, Brandon Garcia talks the Hemmings Car Corral at the Grand National Roadster Show. We've got this week in auto history. I think, Mr. Mars, are you doing that? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I can't hear you. I think that you've got yourself turned off. You passed on there. that. And we'll get you caught up on the stories making automotive news headlines this week. Howdy. Along with Mike Otto, This World Mars, and we always need more Jeff Zekin. I'm Don Armstrong. Glad you could join us on this rainy Saturday here in the Houston, Texas area. But it's not rainy out in California, and that is where our next guest, Brandon Garcia, is uh, speaking to us from. The Hemmings Car Corral at the Grand National Roadster Show. All right. Brandon, good morning to you. Good morning, boys. How are you doing? Well, we're doing fine. It's 7.30 in the morning. You look all bright and bushy-tailed up there. And You're you got just you- getting in, aren't you? It just getting in from last I'm on East night. Coast time, guys. I'm on East Coast time. I've been waking up at 4 a.m. every day. Been here for about two days now. Oh Lord, yeah. So where where are you in California? So we're out in Pomona, California. Oh yeah, which is about yep, right close to the Fairplex. Where we're hosting our Hemis.com car corral. That for us yesterday. We're crossing our fingers for a great sunny Cal- Southern California day today. I um, mean, it's all looking good. I've spent uh, quite a bit of time there in Pomona at the drag strip, and uh, I know exactly where you are. Is the uh, NHRA museum there in front of you? It is. I actually was able to do a, a short press conference in the museum yesterday, and it was it was amazing. You know, I, I come from the NASCAR world where, you know, we had the Darlington Raceway Museum, of course, the Hall of Fame in Charlotte. Um, the cars are just beautiful, and the history is what attracts me to to those types of venues. Yeah, well, um, as a matter of fact, I, I ran into Erica Enders a week ago at a at a private party, and um, she uh, is looking forward to heading out to Pomona again after the kickoff down at the Gator Nationals. But uh, that's another story for another day. I want to know about the Grand National Roadster Show. Let's let's. Put that into perspective first, and then move on to the Hemmings Car Corral. We got time. Yeah, I mean, so this is the seventy fourth annual Rain National Road Show. Um, we got Hemmings partnered with, with that show um, here. And I, I assume I assume that they par- um, partnered with you know, that no show. Place. I was going to say I, I was, I'm sure that they partnered with that show seventy four years ago. <laughs> uh, maybe not quite 74 1954 okay. yeah. yeah yeah so we were on our way yeah exactly all right so tell me about the the i can only imagine the grand national roadster show in la because that's basically where they yeah are sure so what about hemming's car corral it, it's a that's a special section there at the show it is. So we have brought um, 15 of the most beautiful hot rods you'll see at the show to be a part of our Hemmings.com car corral, which is right on Redwood Avenue, if you guys are familiar with that, um, right, very close to the main hall. And what we've done is provided a, an opportunity for enthusiasts to sell and display their hot rods in front of thousands of enthusiasts that are going to be coming through over the weekend. Um so we have a great kind of sectioned off area where these folks are, are talking to potential buyers. Each vehicle um, is on Hemmings.com for sale via our Hemmings Make Offer product. And, and Hemmings Make Offer is, is a way for buyers to set their asking price and then communicate in real time, or I should say in real time. That's uh, it. There, you go. there you go. Good, good with catch. With potential buyers. Yep. Um so it's been great. You know, those folks started showing up bright and early yesterday. Uh, it was actually a, a great crowd on Friday. Um, and we hope to have a, a similar crowd, if not more, today. And it's really a, an opportunity for not just the folks who are selling their car, but everyone to understand how frictionless our Hemmings.com marketplace really is. You know, we've listened to our customers. We've listened to enthusiasts of all kinds and, and put together a marketplace where – 
no matter where you are at in your enthusiast, your novice or seasoned collector, there's a place for you to land um, within our, our journey, if you will. And, and the great part is that our brand new service, Hemmings Pay and Title, is available to these 15 sellers and potential buyers um, to use. And the Hemings Pay and Title service is really eliminating payment and title fraud. You know, our partners at Key Savvy and, and ourselves, we are verifying the buyer's identity as well as verifying the um, ownership of the vehicle. So it's really, you know, taking out any friction that you may have with the transaction, which, you know, as we all know, can, can be sketchy at times. You know, so we're, we're providing that service launched maybe a few days ago um, for our, for our customers. Interesting. Uh, yeah, I know that there is uh, fraud in, in, especially in the aftermarket and especially when it comes to hot rods and, and special mm -hmm. cars, uh, all over the place, title fraud, yeah. uh, fraud in misrepresenting the car and that sort of stuff. Well, that's interesting to know. Let's get into that a little bit. How does it work? Explain it to me. Absolutely. So, you know, putting my marketing hat on it, it's really no more no more do you have to go and meet uh, a buyer and or seller at the bank or carry a large amount of cash. So what we do is once um, we take each term, it can choose to um, leverage the Hemings Pay and Title Service. It's um, three hundred dollars that the buyer and seller can negotiate on who pays what. A, a great kind of um, process if you will to to see who who's paying paying that price and what we do is we um take your information our partners that he's savvy who have done this hundreds of times and, and seen almost everything will will hold your funds if you will and release it to the seller once the vehicle arrives to the buyer uh, there we go. Oh, bad connection. Okay, well, Brandon, if you can hear us, uh, you know we. Mike told us at the beginning of this interview that you got some real sketchy internet service there at the hotel where you are uh, in Pomona, and um, uh, it's bitten us because we have a frozen image of you <laughs> and no audio through, and yeah. no audio. So, uh, well, the good, the good news is though he's, he's that, back. That, uh, yes, go ahead, Mike. That. There's a, an opportunity yeah, about that, to join us again in a week or two to actually talk specifically about that title process. Gotcha. Okay. All right. Very good. Okay. We got you back. Go ahead. No, we don't have you yeah, back. So it's, it's, <laughs> no, it's, it's, you got to have, I think Mike gave you a number to call and uh, maybe that's probably the best yeah, way to continue yeah, the, the interview. Audio. Yeah. So we'll just do the audio. If you could call us back, that'd be good. Because I want to learn more about this this uh, new service that they're offering, and in the meantime and in between time, it just so happens. Do we that have I, a Hemmings? Look, look at that! Look at that! <laughs> I got to get a scorecard. It's Hemmings dot com sold cars roundup. Here, I'll give you a piece. I of got paper. right here. I you got, got it? it. Yep. Okay. Yep. 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 So while he's while Mars is working on that, let me move on to uh, this week's Hemmings sold cars roundup that I love doing. Um. One that caught my attention was a 1978 78 Toyota FJ40. That's that off-road looking, Jeep looking mm -hmm. kind of thing yeah, yeah, yeah. from Toyota. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine what a 78 Toyota FJ40 would go for? You want to take a wild stab? I'm going to guess 14. 14. Mm -hmm. Michael? Mr. Mars, he, he, we're not going to... Uh, yeah, give, he, me, give me a second. He's going to have to do that. But I'm going to tell you, you said 14? Yeah. 53025 I meant to say 53. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I meant to say that. Now, um, what was... 78, come on. What was the what was the character's name in American Graffiti? Was oh, it gosh. Steve that, had, that is, had his brothers, Ron Howard's 58 oh, uh, Chevy Lord. Impala? I believe that he was driving it, but whatever the case may be, imagine a 58 Chevrolet Impala. Now, this is a two-door. It looks like it just rolled out of the factory, okay? White on white on red, red interior, white, beautiful, white wall tires. Okay, Nothing, the FJ not, went for that price. Then what the, do you think the 58 Chevy Impala went for? 
52. 52? Mike? 42. $71,400. Wow. Holy cow. Yeah, but it, I mean, look at it. It looks beautiful. I it's mean, gorgeous. It really is. What I need to do is I need to steal these Double pictures. Double headlight. Yeah. I need to steal these pictures so you guys can see it too. All right, here's one. A 1999 BMW Z3. Now, that is that sports car looking thing. Kind of, imagine uh, uh, an MG with a long hood on it. And this one here has the optional hard top roof. It's a convertible, clearly. But guess how much that went for? Okay. A 99, 99 BMW Z3. Now, you know those, those high school boys that uh, up there in the Woodlands High School yeah, they would with their BMW, up. they oh, would yeah. eat this up, especially at the price of $11,550. Oh, I was going to say eleven. Oh, I was say twenty two is what I was going to say. Yeah, no. Uh, and that's why I picked it because it was such an <laughs> eye-opener. I thought, what? All right, here's one for you. An 88 Ford Bronco. Now, not the O.J. Simpson. An 88 smaller yeah. Ford Bronco 2 is what it is. A Ford Bronco 2. It's sold for $8,750. Wow. We're way off. Yeah, I know. Is he is he back yep. with us now? Well, he's um, trying to, okay. well, try to get him to unmute. All right, unmute. All right, um, here's one. Jeff, this is for you to right. buy and take on the Hot Rod Tour of Texas. Okay. A 1941 <laughs> Buick Super oh. 8. Oh. In teal blue. 30, I, I would be interested in this. $32. $8,000. Look at, look Let at, me see that. Look at that. Look at that up there. Nice. Eight grand for that. Eight grand. And so what I, I guess the point that I'm trying to make is, is the fact that there is something out there that's for sale. For everyone. For everyone. Mike, Here's can I borrow nine grand? 2002 <laughs> Lexus SC430. And that's the little sports car. Oh, the two seater with the retractable hard top. Looks really good. Two thousand two. Now again, I don't know the condition. Eighteen. I didn't get. Eighteen. Mars, you got you got an idea? No, we got our guess back on audio. That's okay. I'm sorry, you have to unmute yourself, Mike. He always forgets that. The sold price on the Lexus SC430 is nine thousand five hundred dollars. Wow, way off today. Yeah, See, yeah. now that would be something that yeah. you could get, Kylie. Oh, uh, her her parents can't. Now, this is Mars' car <laughs> right here. A 1953 Hudson Hollywood. 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 Michael J? Uh, yeah, I, I'm going to have to bust that one out at about 18. 18? I'll go 14. Uh, how about 26,775? Uh, wait, off. I know. And a Hudson. It's the rain. Holy it's oh, it's the got to be. It's the weather. A got Hudson, us all out of whack. I'm done playing. Take okay, my so, sandbox here. So, do we have our guests back with us? I believe so. All right. Well, we got you back, we think. Are you there with us? You do. Sorry about that, guys. Well, that's all right. You need you need to get your money back on that hotel room. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Where are you, are you staying there in Pomona? We are. Yeah, not too far away. Um, but I heard you guys talking about some cars. Figured I'd give you guys a taste of, of what we have in the Corral if you're interested. Yeah, I am. Definitely. Hit it. My, my personal favorite. Um, we actually have a beautiful 1939 Ford Deluxe Custom. Um, it was actually one of the first to arrive, and we were just in awe. We're like, oh, my goodness, this is this is going to be a showstopper for sure. Um, and then a close second is a 1949 Chevy 3100 five-window cab short bed in a beautiful orange. Um, um and let me let vehicle, me make this clear to everybody. Let me make this clear to everybody that's listening and, and picturing this in your mind. That these are custom hot rods. Correct, Brandon? That is correct, yes. Yeah, yeah. So I don't want you to get the idea that, you know, these are stock cars. They are not. These cars have been massaged a lot. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, to be in a show like this. Uh, are these uh, in, in the uh, Hemmings Car Corral? They are, yes. So we're right off of Redwood Avenue, right next to Building 4, the main hall. Uh, for anyone attending today or tomorrow to come check and out, check out and and again the beautiful thing about this this opportunity the car corral is that you can make an offer on the spot wow if you wished yes which is you know pretty wild when you think about it you know we had um, 15 total vehicles submit or register to be a part of this this hemmings.com car corral all 15 are available for sale on hemmings.com now are they all from the LA area 
They are. Um, I'd probably say that talking to some of the, the sellers, maybe about 100 miles away, you know, some drove them in, some came on a, on a truck bed. So we have a, a good variety, but I would say most of them are from the Southern California area. Cool. Because I will tell you this, it's a it's a different car culture that we are used to here in, in, in Houston, exactly. Texas. Uh, it is, remember, this is where it all began. And so these guys are well-schooled and probably grew up around these cars uh, in their day. And uh, so I would imagine that the quality of the cars, impeccable. So I wouldn't be good at that because I've been messing up the guessing game here today. So I would be overpaying. On that. Not necessarily, uh, because, I mean, they may be in the car corral, but, you know, there is there is a kind of a standard price as a rule for the make, the model, what's been done to it, how deep is the is the uh, actual customization of the yeah, car. The restoration. Yeah, restoration. Yeah, the kind and, of motors that got in it. I mean, is this a real show car or is this a driver? We want to go in the hot rod tour with this. Mm-hmm. You know, so there's those kind of variables in there. Yeah, and I'm sure that once you get there and you start asking questions and they realize just how well-versed you are in the automotive world, they would take sympathy upon you. and not <laughs> <laughs> Brandon, True. Uh, Brandon True. is there any, any there that you'd like to get a hold of? So that 49-3100 actually caught my eye when it rolled in. So my grandfather, who has since passed away, he has one in his, in his ranch up in northern New Mexico. And myself and, and my my family are trying to put plans together to actually revive that. Um, you know, way before my time, my my family, my aunts and uncles have stories of of him driving that and working the ranch in it. And it really brought me back to the, to that. You know, I, I haven't really touched that um, plan in a while, but you know, it's stories like that that drive you in. You know, I didn't grow up a car guy, um, but what I do love is community and storytelling. Right, so. That's the one that I'm, I'm going to take home, um, spend a little bit of time with, check it out, share with my family, and, and put a rush on, on what we can do to revive that and, and really you know, revive my, my grandfather's legacy. Interesting. That's good. Uh, so you got some family history with it. And that's always special, and you'll never get that back. Yeah. And uh, I would encourage you to, to go, yeah, go, go with that. Um, so... Have, have you noticed the difference I was just talking about? I, I, I'm sure that you heard me. The fact that East Coast customs are different than West Coast customs. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, they're lower to the ground. Lower <laughs> to the ground, the paint color, a um, little bit more bold. Um, and, and outside of our Hemmings.com car corral, the main hall where we're situated with a, with a, a tent the vehicles up for for the ARP award look completely different than what you might see out east. You know, the paint color is a, is a really pretty um, hot pink. Uh, I believe it's a – I might be getting this wrong. I believe it is a deluxe. Um, but that's the biggest difference for me. The paint, yeah, the paint colors and the lower to the ground. Well, you know, it's it's always been the cutting edge of car customization out there, um, uh, out there in Hollywood, mm-hmm. and um, mm-hmm. it's not a bad thing. And even even if you're on the West Coast or here in the Houston area, you know, a lot of the ideas come from the West Coast. Hey, I really like the way that they lowered that. I like the wheels on that. I like the color of that. And uh, it's the latest, greatest from out there. A lot of guys kind of tend to grow with that kind of design and look. And then others going, I appreciate what they got going on. We got our own thing going yeah. on over well, here. And that's the, that's the advantage and the beauty yeah. of going to these is because you can get ideas. You can Some say, I'm going to steal that idea. Others say, I'm going to use that as a research tool and put that fender this way or that bumper closer. Yeah. It, it's all part of that networking and getting ideas. Yeah. It is. So where do we where do we find all of the information on the Hemmings Car Corral, the Grand National Roadster Show? Where where do we get the information on that? Yeah, so I think the information just comes straight from the from my mouth. You know, we're we're gonna be at the Fairplex in Pomona today, Saturday and tomorrow Sunday. Again, we're right off of Redwood Avenue near the main hall. And everyone's welcome to come check it out. And well, we do I- have those fifteen vehicles for sale. Can we see those online? Um, can, can we see those online, Brandon? Yeah. 
Yes, we can. Yes, we can. So we have a, a great story um, written by one of our staff writers that talks through each vehicle. Um, so you can just go to Hemmings.com, click on the entertainment icon on the on the top navigation, and read about you know the corral itself and, and the 15 cars we have available. Interesting. Yeah. And uh, when are you coming back to the East Coast? I'm probably going to. I'm actually going to take a red eye um, tomorrow night. And um, I think I leave around 10 p.m., get in 5 a.m. to Charlotte time. Yeah. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. Do you have to go to work Monday? <laughs> I'll be on. You know, I'm, we're always on. <laughs> but, you know, there's, there's uh, customers to take care of and in a, in a marketplace to, um, to make better. Well, there you go. Well, listen, man, we're going to let you get back to it. I know that we got you up early out there, and we sure appreciate you taking the time to tell us all about the uh, Hemmings Car Corral at the Grand National Roadster Show. And I assume that the Roadster Show goes on all the way through tomorrow. That is correct. That is correct. All right. And that's out at the uh, L.A. County Fairgrounds in Pomona, California. Pomona, California. Yeah, so if you're uh, headed east out on I-10... Well, you're going to have to pass Pomona mm-hmm. to get out there. So just take a little left and head on out there to Pomona. You ever been? Is there a, no. is there an admission? Is there an admission fee to get in? There is. Uh, I believe it's pretty nominal, but we do have um, um, actually tickets that we can hand out. So if you guys uh, so if you're want to shoot us a DM in the Instagram. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. If you want to shoot us a DM in Instagram, I'll be happy to share those with you guys. Very nice. Great. All right. Well, Brandon Garcia, it's great to talk to you, my friend. Best of luck. Stay in touch with us. You got something uh, you're going to go to soon? Let us know. We'll get you on again. Awesome. Thank you, guys. You have a great day. You do okay. the same. Brandon Garcia with Hemmings. Right. Yeah, we, we looked at a few of those pictures. It's, that would be a lot of fun. Yeah, it would be. But like you say, you go out there to go to that car culture, and you get sunk into it between the cars and the street you, and you, the museums and the nightlife and the drag racing. And eh, eh, let's just move. <laughs> <laughs> just move and be amongst for that our, week, for yes. that event, and then we'll move back. I got you. Uh, Pent up demand and expectations of lower interest rates are driving consumer purchasing going into 2024, according to a report from Kaiser Associates and Dave Canton Group released Wednesday. Report found that 27% of consumers put off buying a car over the past two years because of high interest rates, and 16% said they chose a cheaper vehicle for that reason. The survey also found that consumers are more receptive towards hybrids than battery electric vehicles. Of the 43% of respondents who said they want their next purchase to be an electrified car, more than twice as many said they would prefer a hybrid over a full EV. Hmm. Automakers face a new customer loyalty challenge. Huh. Imagine that. Yep. In addition to rolling out attractive new models with cutting-edge technology, as they've always done, they must now figure out how to bring a vehicle pricing back in line with that consumers, with what consumers find palatable. That's according to J.D. Power's annual automotive franchise assessment review. The supply disruptions of the pandemic and the current struggle with sticker price inflation have roiled consumer perceptions of some brands, according to Tyson Jomini, J.D. Power's vice president for data and analytics. The annual presentation charts, the uh, presentation charts, charts the rise and fall of brands because of a wide range of issues, such as product flaws, stale product, and poor service shop satisfaction rankings. Hmm. Missteps in technology also continue to sour customers on some brands. One such glitch was Cadillac's replacement of a traditional latch to open the glove compartment on its electric Lyric with a digital process that requires owners to open it from the vehicle touchscreen. What kind of moron came up with that? (laughs) Hey, watch the language of the Cadillacs. A moron. Oh, come on. Who would who would do that? I don't know. Oh yeah, let's let's drill down into the menu to open the glove box. Not <laughs> I, that just that's another one of those things. You know, there's some engineering student needed a project for his thesis or something. Yep. 
Yeah. Let's just throw more technology at it. Yeah. Exactly. And, but that's not the Does way. Does it work? Who cares? Yeah, that's not the way to do it. Or do they want it? Who sorry cares? to say. Um, General Motors plans to sell plug-in hybrids in North America again, shifting its strategy to go all in on fully electric vehicles after demand has been weaker than anticipated. CEO Mary Barra on Tuesday said the automaker would continue to focus on 2024 on growing its EV portfolio, but that hybrids would play a role in helping yeah. GM meet tightening emission standards. She did not disclose which segments GM will target with plug-in technology or when that will happen. But do you think with, with the, the strike and all the uh, renewal of the contracts and everything, they kind of had to do that for the for the EV side on the <laughs> – Hybrid side. Look, if the because EVs, everybody's stopping the EV all electric, so they figured they'd get back into it. Well, it's not not everybody, but I mean, they were a they were working toward. Oh, there's going to be this huge rush to the dealership to buy nothing but EVs. Mm-hmm. Well, not that's, that's yeah, that's not happening. That was not the market. That was the problem. Is it was not a consumer driven decision that these companies were making. No, and the dealers are going. Hey, we need this. To sell cars here. That's how we stay in business. The EVs aren't selling, and they're all stacked up That's on right. the lots. That's yeah. right. You know, it goes back to the, the cafe standards. Like I said, they need to get their mileage mileage yeah. thing, and that's a real quick way to do it. Time now for a quick break. We'll be right back. The Inwheel Time Car Talk Show is streaming and podcasting. Look for us on your favorite provider. The original group of Loopy Tortilla Restaurants will have you telling your family and friends just what the original recipes mean when it comes to the best fajitas in Southeast Texas. Founder Stan Holt invites you to visit the original Loopy Tortilla near I-10 and Highway 6. Here's the original house that inspired the design of all the rest and the original charm that helped make Loopy Tortilla the go-to destination for Houston Tex-Mex. Speaking of original, nothing can compete with the original lime pepper marinade that everyone will agree makes Loopy Tortilla award-winning beef fajitas the best anywhere. Loopy Tortilla Katie is another location that gives you the same quality and service Houstonians have come to expect at Loopy's. It's located just off I-10 of the Grand Parkway at Kingsland Boulevard in Katy. Find yourself in Aggie Land? Head to the Loopy Tortilla in College Station, located just around the corner from Kyle Field. It's a great place to enjoy those famous frozen margaritas before or after the game. Headed east to Louisiana? Stop in at the Loopy Tortilla in Beaumont. It twos on I-10. You can't miss it. The original group of Loopy Tortilla restaurants invites you in for the best Tex-Mex anywhere. You own a car you love. Well, why not let Gulf Coast Auto Shield protect it? Houstonian John Gray invites you to his state-of-the-art facility to introduce you to his specialist team of auto enthusiasts. We promise you'll be impressed. Whether you're looking to massage your original paint to a like-new appearance, apply a ceramic coating, install a paint protection film, nano-ceramic window tent, or new windshield protection called ExoShield, Gulf Coast Auto Shield is where Houston's car people go. Curbed your wheels? Instead of buying new, why not have them repaired? How about a professionally installed radar detector? Gulf Coast Auto Shield does that too. Get a peek inside the shop and look at the services offered by getting online and heading to gcautoshield.com. Better yet, stop by their facility at 11275 South Sam Houston Tollway, just south of the Southwest Freeway, and get a personal tour. Gulf Coast Auto Shield is your place to go for all things exterior. Call them today, 832-930-5655 or gcautoshield.com. Want to feel good about something special you did for someone special? In Wheel Time and the original Loopy Tortilla group of Tex-Mex restaurants have joined together to help a very worthy cause, God's Garage, a Christian-based 501c3 charity. We know there are lots of places and organizations out there where you can donate a car, truck, or SUV. But we're asking you, our car enthusiast family, to consider donating to God's Garage. Visit GodsGarage.org and learn about its mission, the women that have been helped, how each one is screened, and about their Restore You program. A car donation is an easy way to make a difference in the lives of others. God's Garage needs good operating vehicles, but will take all types in working and non-working condition. Make your heart and soul feel good by donating your gently used vehicle and help support single mothers, widows, and wives of deployed military at godsgarage.org. That's it for this podcast episode of the In Wheel Time Car Show. I'm Don Armstrong, inviting you to join us for our live show every Saturday morning, 8 to 11 a.m. Central on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and our InWheelTime.com website. 
Podcasts are available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, iHeart Podcast, Podcast Addict, TuneIn, Pandora, and Amazon Music. Keep listening, and we'll see you soon.